a couple of points and a, a diagram before we write some code together, because I think that's going to help conceptually. Um, we've been creating arrays of primitive types, arrays of ints, arrays of doubles, things like that, which is fine. We can also create arrays of class types. Um, the key thing to remember, though, is what's stored in the array is a reference to those objects, not the object itself. So when we say new string square bracket 25, we're allocating a new array that can hold 25 elements, just like we would expect. But those 25 elements are 25 references to string objects. And when we do create that in new array, all 25 of those elements will be initialized to a value of null because we haven't created any new strings yet. So just keep that in mind. Like it's like if we have an array of objects, it's kind of like two steps, but it's really no difference than having an array of ints. We have to create the array itself first with the new operator, and then we have to initialize each of the elements, except instead of initializing it to like just a number, we initialize it to like a new string. Um, so I, I grabbed some screenshots from the Java Visualizer tool, which I think is helpful to help us build like a conceptual model in our heads of what this looks like. We're going to be creating an array of calendars um, or calendar objects. So when we, and we're going to create one for each month of the year. So we're going to create an array with 12 elements. And after we do that, it's going to look like this top picture where the value of each and every element is null. And we reference it with this variable calendars. And we'll write the code to do this in a minute. I just want to show you the pictures first. Then um, we're going to use a for loop and initialize each element to a new calendar corresponding to the first day of the corresponding month. Um, so once we create a new calendar object, um, the value of that element is not the calendar object itself. Rather, it's a reference to that calendar object. Okay. Um, you know, you can think of back to like our little pockets that we had up on the whiteboard with our physical model. There's not enough room in there to store an entire object, but there's enough room to store a reference to that object. And so eventually after our loop finishes and we've initialized all 12 elements, we're going to have 12 different references to 12 different calendar objects. I just included the screenshot of the first one, um, but there's a lot of calendar objects there. So that's what we're going to be creating. So let's take a look at this in the code. Let's write another method here at the end. And we're going to capture the key things that we need to keep in mind, print out these calendars as an example, and just get a sense of how this works. So public static void create array of calendars. And so what we want to accomplish is we want to create an array of 12 calendars, each calendar initialized, oops, initialized to the start of each month. But what we most, but the key thing we got to remember throughout this is when we create an array of references to objects, and I think that's a helpful way of phrasing it. Don't think of it as an array of calendars. Think of it as an array of references to calendars. It's not an array of strings. It's an array of references to strings. Um, so when we create an array of references to objects, each element is initialized to null. We have to explicitly create new, and I'm emphasizing new because we're literally going to use the new keyword. We have to create new objects and assign the corresponding references to each element. So the, the syntax for this is exactly as it would be if we were creating an array of ints or doubles. We just replace the type int or double with the name of the class. The class name we're using here is Gregorian calendar. There are many different types of calendars. Most of you are most likely familiar with the Gregorian calendar, so that's what we'll use. I'll name my variable calendars, plural, because there's more than one calendar in the array. And then I say new Gregorian calendar, and I want 12 of them. 
12 references and they'll all be null. But let's really emphasize that. Let's actually print this stuff out. So at this point, every element in the array has a value of null. And we will prove it by using an enhanced for loop. So for each calendar in my array of calendars, we'll print it out. So you'll see they're all null to begin with, as expected. All right, well, now let's actually create the new calendar objects. So that's the second step, the one that we often forget. So, and when we do forget this, just as a heads up, because it's so easy to forget, you're going to start getting a lot of null pointer exceptions because the, you have all these null references, and then you try to use the elements in the array, and it generates null pointer exceptions. So when that happens and you're dealing with an array, just pause and be like, hey, did I ever actually create all the objects? Probably not. So we're going to create new calendar objects and assign their references to each element in the array. So here it would not be appropriate to use an enhanced for loop because we need to modify the values of the elements. So I have to use a traditional for loop. I'm going to use a loop variable of i as short of index. And I'm going to write it like we write all of our traditional for loops when we're dealing with indices. For int i equals zero, i is less than calendars dot length. I could do less than 12, but it's better to use dot length in case I make a change in the number of elements later. And then i plus plus. And so I'll do calendars sub i equals new Gregorian calendar. Um, the, when we construct a calendar, we specify the year 2022. We specify the number of the month. Uh, January is one, so I'm going to do I plus one. And then first day of the month. And then I'm going to copy this code so we can actually see what it looks like when it prints. Now, just a head up when you compile and run this, dates, times, are really, really complicated. There are some fascinating books out there written about like how we keep track of time and dates and all these things. Dates and times are a huge headache for software developers. Um, it's so much more complicated than you would think it would need to be, but it is. And so when you print out this object, you're gonna get a sense of what are all the properties of a calendar object. There are a ton. Um, and we're just focused really on the year, the month number, and the day of the month number. But you're, as you scroll through it, you're going to see there's a ton of different properties. And I'll, I'll run this too. So this is what the objects look like when you print them out. There's all sorts of time zone stuff and daylight savings time stuff and all sorts of things. But eventually, somewhere near the end, we can see basic stuff like the year, the month, and the day of the month. That's what we've got so far. So, lots of stuff. There is one additional thing. I want to share with you, um, and this is a subtle but really important point. Um, I've really been trying to hammer home the fact that when we use an enhanced for loop, we cannot modify the values of the array. And that is definitely true. That does not mean that we can't use the values of the elements in the array, the references, to invoke mutator methods 
and change the properties of the objects already referenced. Okay. So what that means is we can't create like a new calendar and assign that to an element in the array using an enhanced for loop, but we can certainly change the calendar that is already there. So let's do an example of that because this is a, a subtle but really important point. So an enhanced for loop cannot modify the values of the elements, elements in the array. And the values are the references, right? So for example, references to calendar objects. We cannot change that. But we can call mutator methods, which modify the parameters of the referenced objects. For example, we could change the day of the month. Okay. And let's write code that actually illustrates this with an enhanced for loop. So again, for each calendar in my array of calendars, um, we can do like mathematical operations with a calendar object. We can call add. There's several different things we can add. So when we call this add method, we have to specify to what, to what parameter, um, not parameter, property is what I meant to type here. Uh, what property we're interested in changing. And the way we do that is with a constant, Gregorian calendar dot day of month. Let's add two to that. So we were the first day of the month, now we should be the third. We can copy our little loop to print everything out again. And when you compile this and run this and scroll far to the right, you will see in fact that um, the, the day of the month should now be three. So again, the same thing applies here, like a, just to reinforce this, imagine we had an array of turtles. Um, we cannot use an enhanced for loop to change uh, one of the values of the array to refer to a different turtle, but we certainly could invoke a method to change all of the turtle's pen color, for example. So we can't modify the values in the array, we can certainly modify the objects that they reference. Let me run this as well. And if I find the right fields here, there we go. Day of the month was one before, now it's three, which is pretty cool. All right.